Hi, good morning and welcome to the ZP Developer Zone. So at ZP we do this um, webinar every Thursday at 8 a.m. Um, London time and we use it as an opportunity to answer technical questions that have come in um, during the week. So we'll um, essentially jump into this a bit quicker now and go to the, the first slide. So the first slide is just a quick sort of summary that um, lots of the materials that we'll discuss today um, if they're technical and you're not entirely certain, then I would suggest uh, the ZP Academy. We do do these webinars every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time, so you know technical questions are definitely answered by us at ZP. Today, I'm going to meet a collaborator who's actually in the UK labs at the moment. He's been a follower of these webinars for as long as they've been going, and I'll put some pictures up um, on the websites and stuff like that about that so the collaborations do um, come about even we even see people asking about jobs um, on the YouTube channel so LinkedIn is a really good place to see our announcements over that we have the ZP developers own website we do actually have a workshop running in September um, in Norway um, it's really aimed at well it's aimed at people interested in both fabricating and manufacturing and actually running glucose tests and lactate tests. So we have a webinar in Norway, not a webinar, sorry, a, a live workshop in Norway in September. Um, and it's aimed at really people who want to get a kind of hands-on experience of fabricating, for example, glucose sensing, but it's not um, fully aimed at glucose sensing. Um, then they'll do the testing themselves as well. And it's a two-day um, workshop. So we also do workshops um, as well. I'll go a little bit quicker now and jump into it. This week, um, I had two questions. One about what's called the Easy Flex, which is a set of electronics that we have um, regarding um, a set of electronics for wearables. But we also really had um, some inquiries about PCBs as well. So I've kind of um, PCBs as biosensors. So I've tried to bring all that into certainly one um, webinar. So in terms of content today, we're going to do a case study. Um, there's nothing new about using, um, and I mean gold PCBs, well, um, gold finished PCBs in um, biosensing. I'll give you an industrial example. At ZP, we do this quite a bit where we use gold PCBs um, as a platform for biosensors and in vitro diagnostics. And then I'll, something I've just been hammering on about is um, the big problem with gold PCBs that people think I'll get a gold PCB. Um, it's, an, it's a gold surface. Gold surfaces are good in biosensing um, and I can make a biosensor on top of it. And it really rarely actually works. And I'll explain um, sort of why that is. Um, a solution, you know, for that PC. Well, I, I'll talk about what um, we have at ZP. Um, and then also touch upon this easy flex so easy flex it's just a quick question that um one of the um collaborators has an easy flex and they just had a quick question about it so i will answer that in terms of case study so the first thing to say there's nothing super new about using pcbs um as a substrate for um diagnostics this is a product that's easily over 10 years you know um, the development started 10 years ago. This has been a you know, billion dollar company and is a billion dollar company. There's no issues with this. So, and here, when you kind of peel back um, this cassette, and I describe it as a kind of IVD, an in vitro diagnostic um, cassette. When you peel it back, you find really you're looking at a PCB. Um, and it's an electrochemical system uh, based on PCB and you know these electrodes here. Um, you can sort of analyze them and, and they're, they're definitely gold. Um, the reason this partly works is because um, I presume that this company, or assume that this company has spent quite a lot of money actually getting this going. Just want to say hi to Aftab this morning. Great to see you, Aftab. So this company um, has spent you know a lot of money um, in developing this gold PCB. But also, I mean, if you look at their marketing material, when they do their assay, if you look at the marketing material, because I say I very specifically say marketing material because marketing material doesn't always reflect reality, but the marketing material, which is in the public domain, so we can get hold of it, you know, it shows you that the voltage window that's kind of giving them their signal is between you know zero and 
0.2 something volts. That's quite critical because what they're suggesting here is, um, my statement first of all is PCBs um, and specifically gold PCBs can be used in vitro diagnostics. This is a successful product and it's used. A hint as to why they're able to get away with this might be because when you look at the voltage window from their marketing literature, actually they're not using too high a voltage. And that will come up again um, later on. So there's a case study, a real product, um, billion dollar business. Um, they get away with it successfully. There's probably some points that, you know, it's a, it's not a super long assay in terms of they're not running this gold PCB for a super long time. And also the voltage window is not so high. They're running it at 200 and something millivolts, not necessarily something like 650 millivolts which I'll touch upon again in a minute. So ZP, we do use um, PCBs quite a bit. We end up doing a uh, sort of PCB mix sometimes that will have um, printed circuit board materials in the biosensor array. Um, but we might also use um, thick film printing in that array as well. So at ZP, we, um, we're pretty used to using PCBs as a, um, as a substrate for biosensing and in vitro diagnostics but we're also um, used to mixing those materials up as well and using um, screen printing for, you know, for th when um, necessary. Um, so we've got a, we, ha we have that uh, micro titer plate that I just showed on the previous slide. We have a couple of sort of, I would, yeah, these are kind of, these are look like a lot like screen printed electrodes, but actually they're made by um, PCB fabrication. Um, so we have a number of these on the market. Um, now I'm actually going to end up recommending, um, when I say these two, I'm going to hold my mouse over this at the moment, this one and this one. And this is because these are made with um, a process that delivers hardened gold. So we have, there's a proprietary process and it delivers a hardened gold material. And it's this that really makes um, these two in particular robust and can be used in IVD um, and biosensing applications. I'll dig into that a bit, um, a bit more. Now the problem is this: these were um, we previously tested some gold PCB biosensors from another company. So this was before. Then we put a voltage on these um, on these electrodes, and we ran them for some time. And you can see that before there was nothing there. Afterwards, there's a little sort of um, blip here. And before there's nothing there and afterwards there's a blip here this is absolutely classical that people go in with just at a high level thinking all oh, right pcbs they're made in lots of volume gold is is one of the materials that they can do with pcb fabrication therefore i'll get my gold electrodes made by pcb fabrication and i'm good to go and they just get this corrosion issue because underneath the gold um there are seed layers or materials that are things like nickel and chromium that are um, very, I'm not going to say corrosive, they can undergo corrosion quite ra quite rapidly. Um, and so if they get exposed in any way to the liquid above, they just start corroding and you get a massive current. Um, and it's not specific current, it's just a corrosion of the underlying um, materials. So this is the problem that... Um, other than the previous company that I just showed, there's very few companies that have actually been successful with a PCB um, in biosensing and in vitro diagnostics, and it really comes down to this corrosion issue. Um, and I say it's not simply people try to sort of do processes where they try to tell the PCB um, manufacturer, or oh, thicken up that gold, thicken up that gold. It's two reasons. Thicken up the gold doesn't necessarily work. And secondly, actually, often with these PCB manufacturers they don't have such good control that they can genuinely you know thicken up the gold i have come across um lots of not lots of but i have come across scenarios where somebody is specifying a certain thickness of gold they're giving it to the pcb f manufacturer um they're not really verifying actually the batches and actually they f soon find out that in fact they're not getting that thickness of gold so you're paying for something that you're not actually getting and i have seen that scenario turn up a lot but the problem with PCB um, as a substrate is actually it undergoes corrosion and um, you would expect that, you know, PCB fabrication is so low cost and so ubiquitous that actually everyone would be on it. But it's actually this, which is the big reason that stops it. 
Now, um, here I'm talking about these Masia sensors um, PCBs, um, and these are not um, these are not made by the usual gold um, processing PCBs. This is a hardened gold, um, or this is a process that delivers hardened gold, and they have um, actually validated this. So this is. Um, there's two voltammograms in here. So we've scanned the voltage from something like um, minus 0.5 volts to 0 0.7, 0 0.650, oh sorry, 0.65 volts. So the first um, CV is just standard PCB gold. So standard PCB gold, we get this big lump. And this really is a signal that actually, um, rather than getting beautiful voltammetry of the um, very cyanide we're actually breaking through the gold and we're just corroding and um, the underlying seed seed materials so if you get a piece of gold and you want to um, do a quality control on it whether you can use it in your assay for example you could take something like a five millimolar um, ferrous cyanide solution in something like one molar potassium chloride do a cycle of voltammogram on it if you get the red curve then that gold is good if you get the blue curve, then you're um, you're breaking through the gold and you're reaching the um, seed layers underneath it. That signals nothing to do with your, let's say, electrochemistry. That's really just telling you that you're corroding the nickel or chromium underneath the gold. So the red one is actually on the electrode that I'm showing on the left-hand side. That um, and it's really kind of very classic, you know, in terms of its shape. Um, the peak separation is pretty good. Um, you can't see um, signals due to corrosion so that's because it's not made by traditional PCB um, fabrication it's a it's a um, bespoke process and it delivers a very hardened gold now it's worth saying um, so that's what you're expecting and that's what you get with these um, with these particular this particular gold process um, now it's probably worth saying that this is a slightly different variant on it. That this one actually has a um, silver silver chloride um, reference on it as well. So the previous one had gold reference. This one has a silver silver chloride reference. Now this time they've really gone to town, or um, we've really gone to town with abusing this um, electrode. So when I say going to town and abusing it, the test solution is 0.5 molar sulfuric acid. That's you know a fairly corrosive environment. And actually, they've scanned the voltage up beyond one and a half volts. So we're really, you know, getting into some energetic regions here. Um, what you see on this forward scan is an oxidation wave. And this is actually the um, oxidation of gold from the surface. So we actually are stripping away gold. It's really important because we're stripping away gold. Um, but what we're not doing is breaking through to the underlying layer. So it tells you something about the hardness and it tells you something about the um, resistance of that surface to both acid and voltage. So we stripped it away and we kind of, that's confirmed because actually there's the other peak that you see that's a reduction peak, um, both its shape and position tells you that this is actually the replating of gold onto that surface. So that I would describe as a very abusive test and I'd actually be pretty hard pressed to think that any normal gold um, PCB that you got off um, a production line would ever withstand this kind of test. Um, but it does talk about the hardness of the material or the gold that comes out of this particular bespoke um, process. Um, so the particular electrodes that we recommend, if you're trying to do a biosensor or an in vitro diagnostic and you're trying to use PCBs, um, PCBs are attractive, but if you need to um, you don't want to get that corrosion current. So these are the two electrodes that if you need to do some R&D and actually test out this material, these are the two um, electrodes we um, recommend. They're basically the same except one of them's got a silver silver chloride reference um, upon it, um, as you can see here. And also I do have put a link um, underneath this video um, to sort of help you um, locate these particular materials. Now I'm going to go slightly now onto the glucose electrode because I think the glucose electrode is a good way, or glucose sensor rather, is a good way of um, talking about tricks and tips on how you can use a PCB in many applications. 
including um, glucose. So I've done this um, before where, you know, we would have something like, you know, a gold PCB. Um, in this first instance, we would put a, ma a mediator onto it and then put the polymer layer onto it and then put a barrier layer onto it. Now that mediator is important and I'll tell you why in a minute because um, you know the the role of the role of the barrier layer is to um, gives it the sense of some robustness and also stops necessarily all the glucose getting to the um, enzyme layer. But if the glucose does get to the enzyme layer, then ultimately what we're producing um, because of the presence of the enzyme and the presence of the um, um, glucose and in the presence of oxygen, what we're producing is hydrogen peroxide. Um, now, hydrogen peroxide, we can detect that on gold at voltages approximately like 650 millivolts. That's important because I did tell you earlier on that there was a company that has been successful in using PCBs in their in vitro diagnostic and there in their marketing material, they weren't using voltages like 650 millivolts. They were using something like more, more like 0 to 200. And that's because they were using, um, well, they were they, they were at a voltage now, a lower voltage. Now, if you want to make a glucose sensor that works at a lower voltage and therefore gives you a better robustness on that gold, then you probably need to use a mediated system. I mean, with ZP, we talk about this all of the time. So our mediated system from ZP, for example, the voltage that you would have to use. We were just having a meeting this week and I asked one of the scientists who does this quite regularly and they said, you know, it's a the voltage that we often use with our mediated electrodes is somewhere in the region of zero to 200 millivolts. It shifts around a bit depending on the material set, but that's important. See, so it says that uh, things that we can say about using PCB gold as a sensor that you do have to use a hardened gold. I think the one that I've shown, you know, on those products is a hardened gold. It's something we can run as a process. Also, if you want to get robustness out of a gold PCB, it's probably a good idea to actually use a mediated system because then you can work in voltages that are more like zero to 200 millivolts. I just want to say hi to Hitch. Hitch, I'm nice to see you this morning. You can use voltages that are more like zero to 200 millivolts as opposed to the generation one glucose sensors where there is no mediator and we're using voltages that are like, sorry, 650 millivolts. So 650 millivolts is a, you know, However, you look at it is approximately three x the um, the voltage we're using a generation one glucose sensor is about three times that that we would use in a generation two glucose sensor. So it's just to use a glucose sensor and showing that you can even play with the chemistry or the biochemistry in order to use the gold electrode at a lower voltage and therefore give yourself um, more robustness. So things that will help you use a gold PCB as your electrode system are um, hardened gold and that is a proprietary system um, and then then the second part of that is actually being able to reduce the voltage and using a generation two glucose sensor for example would be um, an example of that final question um, so that was all about PCBs um, final question is just we've got a um, user out there and they had a couple of questions but one of the ones I can answer to the, today which was um, they wanted to know if they could, um, they have an Easy Flex. Easy Flex is one of the sets of electronics that we have for people trying to make wearable type sensors. Um, and they were wondering whether they could change the gain resistor. And I did talk to the guys and they said, obviously, once you start desoldering or soldering onto our boards, you know, you're responsible, but you can actually change the gain resistor, you know, if you're a skilled enough, accomplished enough um, engineer, you can do that. You know, you're obviously going to invalidate any warranties, but you know, you are welcome to do that and not welcome to it. You know, you can do it. And this is the resistor if you so wish to do that. So let me just say um, hi to Aftab and Hitcher. I just want to say, guys, that one of the um, ZP's Developer Zone members. Um, is actually with us this week. He's from um, Turkey. I'll take some pictures and put that up. That might be interesting for you guys. And I just want to say, so this week we've spoken about PCBs are used in the market. They're used in a billion dollar product. So PCB gold um, does actually work. Our experience over the years has been that actually corrosion through the gold and getting to the underlying seed layers is the biggest problem. Um, 
And then there is a solution that we have a proprietary um, technology um, through Massius sensors for um, hardening that gold. Um, and also ZP can add value on top of that because we can actually play with the biochemistry and allow, you know, to use that gold at lower voltages. So you can essentially, if you use lower voltages, you're basically putting less power through the gold and you should have greater um, reliability. And then lastly, on the Easy Flex, yeah, there is a gain resistor there. Um, I can't recommend it. I can tell you that you can, you know, because it's your, you know, it's, it's for you to take the soldering iron, but you can replace that gain resistor um, if you so wish and play around with it. So I just want to say thank you to the guys. Lovely to see you. And I want to say um, thank you. We'll do a vlog on Sunday where we answer um, questions. Not we do a summary of the news for the week from Zimmer and Peacock. And we will be back next Thursday, 8 a.m. London time to answer technical questions. All right. And I just want to say thank you then. So thanks very much. Take care and see some of you soon.